Hello and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the hearts to encourage and equip you in your own personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resources, why don't you visit teawithtest.com or connect with me on Instagram, Tessiana. Good morning. It is 10 a.m. on a beautiful Wednesday and I am back with Tea with Tess this morning. And I'm so grateful. I've already popped across to Facebook to see who is with us and I see we have a whole heap of people popping on this morning because I know you're super excited about our guest. I just want to say hello to a few of you so that's why I'm looking to the side. Hello Jim and Joe. So you've got some UK girls, Jill and Rach, hi. And Annie from the Netherlands. Hello Belinda, Simbiti. Who else is with us? Hello Amy and Charlene. Jill, hope you're feeling better Jill. Oh Kim, hi. I love that picture of your twins, Kim. They're, they are so, that is the most beautiful picture. Hello, Kelly. So amazing to have some new friends popping on this morning to support Kate, who's going to be our beautiful guest this morning. So I just wanted to say hi and um, let you know that I'm super expectant and excited for what God has in store for us this morning. Uh, I've had it on my heart for a while to bring Caitlin on Team with Tess to share her heart with you, to share gold with you. She's amazing and uh, I know that this morning she's going to bring something that's going to be incredible for this season. And so you'll know in this series called, um, I've called Ordering Your Private World. It's based upon the book of uh, Gordon MacDonald. So we're deviating slightly, but I really feel that she brings and the heart that she carries, the way that she lives her life will speak to all of the things that we've been talking about so far so and um, before we do that i want to announce our giveaway i don't know if you saw hello everybody jumping on if i haven't said hello to you please know that i am going to go back and say hi Um, so grateful that you've all come to to be a part of this morning to take the time out of your day to invest in yourself and your own spirituality i think that's amazing but before we i want to introduce kit i want to please announce our giveaway so we did a little fun Instagram giveaway this week to create a little bit of love and get you to um, get excited perhaps about um, Caitlin coming to speak with us this morning. And so we're going to do this and all the things. It was completely legit. Amber showed me how to use a thing called Instagram something checker to choose a winner off Instagram. It's amazing. And anyway, so the winner of the uh, Walk Out of the Water devotional and journal is Kay Candace Henwood, which is amazing, one of our link girls. And Candace, I'm going to make sure that you get that and that um, you have something to look forward to over this holiday period and over this busy time heading towards Christmas. So well done, Candace. That's amazing. Well done for getting involved and sharing and all the things. And you will get your prize probably on Sunday. Well, next week I'll grab it for you and we can make a plan to get that to you. And so I don't want to waste any more time because I know that we, we don't spend too long here because time is precious. And I want to introduce to you a, a new friend of mine, someone that I have recently met and um, uh, I believe I'm going to grow in friendship with. And you know that on Tea with Tess, I love to share my friends with you. I don't want to keep them to myself. So I wonder if we can bring Caitlin up, um, Caitlin De Beer. Hi, Yay. Kate. Hello, Tess. Hello, everyone. How are you? Yes, good. Thank you, Tess, and you. Awesome. It's so good to have you with us. I've just briefly mentioned to the girls a little bit about what they can expect today, but um, also announced our winner of our prize. Yay. I love when a good friend wins something. Um, and so, girls, if you don't know Caitlin Debeer, she is a wife and mother of two little cuties who I often watch on Instagram. And she is um, also a life coach, speaker, and an author of the devotional Walk Out on the Water, and recently the devotional for kids. 
um, which is amazing. Such a beautiful addition to the work that she's already created. And so I'm, I'm just so grateful that you've said yes to the, this moment because I know that we are all going to be so blessed by what you have to say and the heart that you carry. One thing I want you to know, girls, is that you can't, there's certain things you can fake, but you can't, you can't fake a journey and mm. you can't, or you can try, I suppose, but I feel like when someone's authentically who they are, it, it, it speaks to the heart. And so having met Caitlin personally, I can, I can say that, that she's someone who I believe has been on a journey, who is on a journey. And the authenticity and vulnerability of who she is and what she carries is is really and beautiful and really impact it's really has impacted me and so i know you're going to be blessed i want you to open your hearts to receive what god has for us this morning and i truly believe that seeds will be planted today so be expectant mm -hmm. for that that god would plant mm -hmm. seeds in your life that that a harvest would be reaped because of words spoken over and into you this morning amen mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> cool, girls. It's wonderful to be with you. And thank you, Tess, for obviously having me here. Um, I must be honest and say that as I listened to Tess speaking now, I thought I could actually quite comfortably sit back in my chair and just listen to Tess. <laughs> um, but isn't that what we're all feeling at the moment? Hey, it's just this... Um, just this exhaustion and this like, oh my word, um, I literally, things have built up to like here yeah, and I'm hoping like hell that um, it doesn't suddenly put me underwater. And then we have those moments at 5 p.m. when suddenly we do feel like we're drowning um, and throw our toys out the cot and then we back on track the next day and we like, again, we're trying to push it all down. But for today, um, I have got such a, such a specific word from God for this season. And this is new for me to get like a, a word from God for others. I tend to share what's, what God's doing in me. Um, and this, I kind of feel like for sure he's doing in me and I'm actually gonna share a bit of my story, which Tess said. Um, but at the same time, I feel like this is a word and season for all of us. And, and it absolutely does fit Tess with, with what you were saying in line with um, that ordering your world, I think it is. Um, which I haven't read yet and I need to. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get into this. So what I want to do is I want to start with telling your story. I tell lots of stories, um, but I want to tell your story. So I grew up at the beach and um, I'm literally for the first 12 years of my life, we lived right next to the beach. And so the sea has always been a huge part of my life. I um, you know, learned to swim out to backline by like age seven. But we also um, have a beach house sort of a bit further down the coast. And when I went off to boarding school, so I came up to boarding school in um, Durban. And when I went to boarding school on weekends, we'd often go to our beach house. And it was really close to the beach. And then there are these like rocks in front of the cottage. So if you imagine that there's, it's literally like a road and then rocks and then the sea. And being a typical teenager, I used to escape down to the beach, all like sulky and like, why do we have to go on week away on weekends? You know, I'm a boarder anyway. Um, anyway, I'd go down to the rocks. I did have a strong faith at that stage as well. And I would always put like music in my ears and I would, sorry, all the actions, I can see the camera pausing. <laughs> um, so I would go down to the beach with my iPod in my ears. And this I had this like spot on the rocks right there in front of our cottage where I would sit and look over the sea and contemplate my teenage life. And often my younger brother would come with me and he is, I've got two younger brothers, but the youngest is six years younger than me. So um, I would say at this time, the story, um, I would say he was about between the age of eight and 10, probably closer to eight. And I was sort of newly saved, didn't grow up in a, um, in a sort of, Christian home going to church every weekend and I was now at a Christian school and this I uh, like was totally on fire okay so you've got to imagine this like teenager who's a bit cocky you know and is ready to save the world anyway I go down to the beach and my brother's with me on this one occasion and we're sitting there and we literally have like iPod in each ear that's how we used to do it okay and we're sitting there and I had um I was so intentional about speaking faith into my younger brother and so we would have these big faith discussions now this particular day i said to him it was probably i'd probably just recently um, learned about tongues the gift of tongues and so i said to, to greg i was about to say noah that's my son i always confuse their names still um anyway i said to greg that i thought that it was about time that we prayed for him for the gift of tongues. Now, if you don't know what tongues is, it's it's like a spiritual language. 
Um, and at age eight, that's quite a push. <laughs> okay, anyway, this was typical teenage me. And so I said to him, you know, I think we should pray for it. And he was like, Kit, like you, you you're crazy. I'm far too young, um, you know, whatever his excuse was. And so I said, well, boy, do you think you could walk out on the water looking over the sea? And he obviously looked at me and he was like, don't be stupid. So I was like, well, if you could walk, you know, if you had the faith to walk out on the water, this is a faith gift too. You know, then you would be able to receive this gift from God. And so anyway, so I said, well, why don't we pray and listen to a bit more worship and just you let God just speak to you. Okay, so we close our eyes. We're sitting there quietly and he's, you know, doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. We listen to our music and suddenly he's like, okay, I'm ready. So I'm like, okay, boy, let's pray. And he was like, no, to walk on the water. <laughs> so I was like, all I can see here is myself and I think I'm so funny. Um, that's not what I said. But I was like, no, you're definitely not walking on the water. Are you mad? Anyway, we ended up obviously praying for the gift of tongues, but I love how, and the reason I tell it now is I love how we can be so convinced, um, you know, that we're full of faith and then only to not so much. I'm moving a picture of me so I don't have to stare at myself in the camera while I tell a story that I think is funny. Um, but on that line, guys, um, when it comes to this idea of, of walking out on the water, if you're anything like me and I was sitting in a chair now or wherever you're sitting on your couch, maybe at your desk, whatever it is, and I was listening to this woman, and now she was talking about walking out on the water, I think, and I literally had this picture when I was writing these notes, and I haven't thought of this idea in like years, but I had this picture of like, do you remember when you were a child and you'd go to spur and you would pea shoot, like with a, I don't know if everyone did this, we definitely did it at spur, like a straw, and then you put a little piece of paper inside and go, and you know, pea shoot someone. I think I'd want to pea shoot that person. <laughs> If someone told me right now that I should have the faith or the courage or the strength or the resilience to go and walk out on water. I promise though, we're not going to go there. Um, and so I'm not trying to, to get us to be more courageous today. I don't feel that that's what God's calling us to right now. Um, I think he's actually calling us to something quite different. And what I want to do today is I want to read to you from Matthew 14. And if you've got a Bible, you can open with me. Otherwise, go and read this afterwards or at a time when um, it suits you, because this is, yeah, it's it's really cool to see a scripture differently. And I think that's the beauty of the word is that we can read it again and again and keep seeing something different. So we're reading about Jesus walking out in the water. So first of all, just to give some context. So John the Baptist has just been murdered. OK, beheaded. This is Jesus's cousin and best friend. So, I mean, if you think of what Jesus is feeling, he's just been told by the disciples. He goes off to a quiet place only to then hear that the crowds have followed him. The story that follows that. And I mean, now you're going to go and read it because you're going to be like, there's no way. He then feeds the 5000 and that was 5000 men. So he's just heard like worst news of his life. Goes off to be be quiet and gets called back, feeds the 5,000, probably 15,000 is more like it. I know. I don't know why my computer's frozen. Okay, I hope we're still good. Um, and and now we're coming into where, to where I'm going to read from. Okay, so he's just fed the 5,000. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far from the land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus replied. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Gosh, the scripture just gets me every single time. And I, um, I think... The first thing that I want to focus on just for a second before I tell a story, I'm just looking at the time, um, is there's a big storm, okay, going on. And and I'm sure 
um, that in your life right now, you can probably relate in some way to that. Life has felt pretty stormy in this past season. It's felt pretty much like it's unstable, like the water around us unstable, like the water around us is rising, much like it was for the disciples, like we're fighting, like we're in survival mode, much like it was for the disciples. And then there's Jesus. I think when we when we imagine this like walking on water, I don't know about you, and I don't know how I got this wrong. Maybe it was my lack of going to Sunday school um, over the years, but <laughs> we went to the odd one. Um, but that's um, I, when I imagine Jesus walking out on the water, I always had this picture of like the still, like beautiful, still, like crystal lake. And there was Jesus, you know, in his like flowing outfit, walking out over the water. I didn't imagine this like crazy, hectic, stormy sea and think of the the beach guys when there's a storm. I mean, it is hectic. It is frightening. There's this big storm, crazy big waves. And there's Jesus. He's walking on water in a storm. I mean, he could have done so many other things. He could have sent a rainbow over the sea to tell the disciples he was there. He could have um, made his voice, you know, sound like he was speaking through a trumpet from the side and showed the disciples that he was there, but he didn't. He chose to walk out to where they were in that storm. That's our God. I want to tell you a story quickly. So um, I last, um, not last year, in July 20, gosh, I haven't told this story for a long time. July 2019, um, I went for a run. I was training for a big um, trail race at the time and I tore my glute. And it started off um, as just a tear and it turned into something chronic. Um, reason being that I'd had severe pelvic pain during pregnancies. Um, I've got two kids, as Tess said, um, and, and this just threw off my already unstable pelvis. And for the, the next two years that have followed that, so now we're on like sort of two and a half years, I, I walked a road of chronic pain. And this was something that I wasn't familiar with. Um, and I, I suppose if I look back, I've, I've never really known what it is to suffer. I mean, I sure as hell thought I had known, um, but I definitely had never faced trauma to this extent. And it was in July, I think last year, that I was at my absolute worst. So it was a year in. Um, at that point, I couldn't walk more than 100 meters without being in tears from pain. Um, and so as being an active person, that, that was incredibly difficult. I mean, that was one part of it, was obviously not being able to exercise at all, even take my kids up the road on a walk or on their bikes. Um, I had to give up that entire active life. I couldn't swim in the sea. I couldn't um, do any of those things. Um, and then there was another side, or well, actually two sides. So then I was also, um, my bladder stopped working. And so I was catheterizing permanently. So every time I need a wee, I have to insert like a pipe, kind of. Um, they're really little. It's not like the one that you have in hospital, but it's still it's a catheter, it's just a home catheter. Um, and so I was catheterizing permanently. I was obviously then also in constant pain. And pain is a funny thing. Pain, although it's so physical, it is so mental too, and it is so incredibly draining. Um, and, and what happened then was in the July, I'd seen up until that point, maybe like about 15 specialists. So between like physios, women's health physios, lots. Um, and, and everyone was playing their part and it was fitting together lots of different types of surgeons, well, I think at least five by then. Um, and then I got to this point where my bladder stopped completely. And I met a friend for a coffee and I told her that I just was unable to wee. I didn't really know what to do. It's kind of like, I don't know if anyone's had a bladder infection, it's kind of like that feeling or labor, the pain um, in your tummy. But then no matter what, I, I can't wee and I don't have a bladder infection. Um, and she said, like, you've got to be admitted, like enough's enough now, you know? And I was like, but I've tried, like I've done so many things to try and fix this problem. I was even prepped for an op um, before and, and then they canceled it. And anyway, she phoned the hospital for me and I went in and this was August, 2020. I went into hospital um, and a doctor saw me and hearing my story up until that point, he actually got tearful in the rooms and he'd made space for me to like emergency come in. It was a urologist. Um, Anyway, and it's then that I learned to catheterize full time. He then put me onto a neurologist who I then went for endless tests that week with. Um, I promise there's gonna be a point to the story. Um, but I went to this neurologist and I felt in every sense at that point, like 
I was, I was getting to this place of absolute surrender. I was trusting God in every sense for healing. I had, um, I, I really felt like I was doing everything to achieve my healing. And um, how often do we do that? We try to like impress God to be able to get something in return. Um, but I felt like I'd played my part and now I was like, okay, hey God, now it's your time to, to do this thing, you know? And I felt like the neurologist was just that answer. It just had got to this point. And so I went to the neurologist. He checked everything out. I had a two hour session with him. Um, and I then came home that day and he said, I'm going to send him all my MRIs. At that point, I'd had about three in the past year. Um, and he was going to look into them. And then I said, when could I hear from you again? And he was like, oh, well, give me the rest of the week. This was like a Tuesday or something. So I get back home and I'm standing in the kitchen with my husband and my mum. And this was like a big deal, obviously. Um, and suddenly my cell phone rings and it's the neurologist. And I'm like, that's so weird. And so I answer and I'm like, like to my, you know, to my um, mum and my husband. And I walk outside and he says, I think I've found something. He said, I've looked at your latest MRI and the previous one. And there is a mass um, in the bottom of your stomach. Well, it's not your stomach, it's intestines, but that region. Um, and it would make a lot of sense for your bladder and so on. So he, um, anyway, so he says this and then he's like, I need you to get to Gateway Hospital. Now I live in Hillcrest. He's like, I need you to get to Gateway Hospital by 5 p.m. today. There's a radiologist who's looked at the scan. He agrees with me. He wants to see you immediately. Come with a full bladder, which for me is incredibly emotional. It means I'm going to have to try and catheterize while I'm there, take a mirror, all these things. Anyway, so we race. We like, this is the best news on earth. I've got a tumor. Okay. I mean, that's literally where I was at. Um, anyway, I have the MRI. I need to get home. And two days later, he only contacted me again. And he said, oh, we realized it was actually just your uterus hanging over. And it's really not a big thing. And guys, I hit absolute rock bottom. And I can't tell you how depressed I was. Um, I struggled to get out of bed. It's so unlike me in character. I'd keep the curtains closed. I'd just lie on the couch. I couldn't even watch anything. I felt like there was just no reason for me to get up and get going. And it was in that place that I decided that I was just going to sit on my bed and I was just going to read my Bible. But I was broken and I was angry with God and I was asking him questions that made absolutely no sense. But in that space, I surrendered. And for me, surrendering is almost coming to the end of yourself. It's like when we say, it's that whole idea of like, when I'm weak, he is strong. But, but when are we ever weak? Like, do we actually allow ourselves to be weak for him to be strong? But I was weak, gosh, and it wasn't by choice. But I, um, I sat there with my Bible and a friend messaged me and she said, where is it? She basically had this like, I think she just preached on it. She's um, a pastor and she said, Moses kept going back to the mountain and that's where God spoke to him again and again. Where is it that you go? She said to me, that is that altar for you. Where is it that God speaks to you? And immediately I was like, it's those rocks. It's those rocks in front of our beach house. I didn't think of it like that. I was very depressed and sad. And I thought of those rocks. And I said to my husband, now I have not been, even though it's directly in front of our beach house and we go there all the time, I haven't been to that spot. Like we have to kind of go on a secret path and stuff. Um, I hadn't been to that spot in years, maybe even since school days. And I said to my husband, I really need to get down the coast this weekend. And he was just desperate for anything at that point to help me. And so he was like, cool, we'll go. And so we went and I went down on, onto the rocks and I was like, God is going to meet me on those rocks. And I had a journal and I had my Bible, like my proper big Bible. And I was like, went down there and I had my iPod and I'd already worked out what I thought God was going to tell me. Okay. As only we can do. Okay. But I went down there and it was windy as hell and not like this enjoyable experience at all. But I knew that this was a meeting place of absolute surrender between me and Jesus. And guys, there was never this like lightning bolt. I didn't have this um, huge epiphany or like, you know, leave with this new career dream. It, it wasn't like that at all. But as I listened to worship and as I allowed myself to be weak before my savior, as I said, God, I'm, I'm not okay. Um, I, I basically opened myself up for the first time in, gosh, I think a good few years at that point for God to actually truly speak to me. And I just had this idea of writing a book. Now, I've been trying to write a book for five years. 
and I have written lots of stuff and I'd saved lots of stuff, but I'd never felt that release. Um, and I felt that there was this like idea to write a daily devotional. I didn't know what it would look like. All I knew was that I got that inspiration right then and there um, and that that would be something I'd try. And the very next day I started writing and and I've now got this this beautiful book um, walk, it's called Walk Out on the Water um, based on based on going back to this. But the reason that I bring it up now is because I feel like the word that God has for us at the moment, two things actually. Number one is peace. Guys, peace is not, peace, peace does not follow success. Peace is not the reward for hard work. The peace of Jesus is like this umbrella that falls above our emotions. And so we still wrestle with all this stuff going on here. But more than that, we develop a worldview of peace. We, it says that we are called to peace, called to peace. It is our calling. We are called to peace. It also says, seek out peace. Seek out peace and work to maintain it work to maintain it. This is the space of surrender, guys, and that's the other word. God is calling us into a season of peace and a season of surrender amidst the storm. God is not waiting for the storm to end before he gives you peace. And God is not waiting for you to be strong or have it all together or stop that nasty habit or have some time off um, or, or for January 1st before he's ready for you to be like, okay, God, here it is. Here's my new year and um, give me some inspiration, you know, as to where you want me to go. This is a word for today. God is calling us to peace and surrender today. And I want to go back to the scripture that I read earlier because I found this so incredible. And this is where I was saying that um, how God or how a scripture can speak to us differently in different seasons. Um, I don't know about you again, maybe this is my lack of, of Sunday school, um, but I always had this, this idea that Jesus called Peter out onto the water, but it actually didn't work that way. I'm going to read you this part again. Um, Jesus spoke to them. He said, don't be afraid. Take courage. I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. Peter thought it up, not Jesus. Jesus can walk on water. Jesus can do all these incredible things. Jesus is in the storm with us. Jesus wants to give us peace right now. He wants to put that umbrella over us of peace. He wants us to walk around literally like carrying this umbrella wherever we go. It doesn't mean we won't be wrestling with emotions. It's not that. It's while we wrestle with emotions, our soul will be at peace because we know where we are going, because we know who our God is. But it's going to take action from our side. And that action is, just like Peter said, Jesus, like, like, I don't think he said call. He said, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. Guys, this is Jesus right now saying, I'm here, I'm in the storm. But I feel like it's that surrender of our own will, that surrender of our own plans, that surrender of our, I'm going to start this in January, um, that it's going to take for us to actually know that Jesus is here in this storm with us. The action that is required from us right now is not one of courage. It's not to take courage. It's not to be more resilient. It's not to like, come on, let's fight the good fight. I mean, we need to. We need to do all those things. But first, we just need to surrender. We just need a space. And you've got to create that space. We've got to actually carve out that space, quite literally carve it out in our lives, in the busyness to say, I'm going to carve out that space for surrender, to put on that worship song, to lie on my floor and to just say, okay, God, I've got five minutes. Um, this is me saying, come, come and fill me up, come and fill my mind with things. It's us saying, I'm going to stop going to church on Sunday, or I'm going to go to that women's ministry thing that I'm totally dreading. But Jesus, this is my, me saying, I surrender, God. And um, you have your way. And I promise, guys, 
he will meet you in that place because he says, if you seek me, I will be found by you. If you seek me, I will be found by you. He will be found by you, but we've got to seek him. We've got to be like Peter and say, like, okay, God, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready. Um, we've got to be the one that actually connects, that actually puts ourselves out there. And again, not in courage, not in courage, guys, in surrender. Surrender is such a beautiful thing because it's gentle and it speaks to the, the woman's heart who's tired in the season or who's burnt out. God doesn't want you to do all these wonderful things. God's not saying, I will reward you with peace. He actually just wants us. He just wants your heart today. Tess, I'm going to pray for everyone if that's okay, and then I'm going to hand over back to you. <sighs> Jesus, thank you, Father, that, that where your presence is, that there is freedom. And thank you that wherever we sit today, that the freedom of God rests on us. And beautiful, the freedom of God rests on you. Jesus, thank you that that peace is not a reward. That you are peace. You are peace, Jesus. And as we seek you out, Father, as we carve out that space to surrender, that you call us in, that you call us close to yourself, Jesus that you direct our path, that you refine our will, that you do all those beautiful things, but all you require from us is that surrender, is that coming back to our Jesus, to our Father, to our King. And Father God, I pray, Jesus, that right now that you would stir up, stir up in each of us, Jesus, a longing to come back to you. Father, fill our minds with, with ideas of where we can create that space. And give us the strength to do that, Lord. And not strength to be more courageous, but, but strength to have a quiet bath and put our phone away. Strength to, to find a new worship song and to lie on the floor even if the kids are lying with us. Father, thank you that, that you are good all the time, Lord. And that you're not scared of our exhaustion. You're not scared of our burnout. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're there. You're there in the storm with us right now. And Father, we just put up our hands now. And wherever you are, girls, if you are in a space where you're able to, to do this, I encourage you to, to put out your hands or put up your hand um, if this is something that's resonating with you. And, and Jesus, I pray right now, Lord God, that you would see us that you would see us saying, come, Father, we, we want more of you, Jesus. Come and fill us afresh, Jesus. Come and call us onto the water so that we can walk by faith, Lord, and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus, that you are enough, Lord. And as we put up our hands, as we put out our hands to you, that you fill up our cup to overflowing, Lord. And you are the only one that can do that. See your daughters reaching out to you today, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amen. Please. I just would love you if you if this has resonated with you to just pop something in the comments. What spoke to you this morning? I can tell you what spoke to me, that God is not waiting for the storm to subside in my life or the bad habit to end or 2021 to be over. He's calling me to peace now amidst the storm and the active response is surrender. And so thank you, Kit, for giving us a moment to, to do that, to just stop and say, here I am <laughs> with all of this mm. stuff. And so I'm just grateful for that because I think for most of us, we don't know how to carve that out. We just go, 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 go. And then we hope it's all going to work out. And, yeah. <laughs> it and me too, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we're all in this together, right? Yeah. Um, thank you for your heart. I really am one of the greatest gifts I think that Tila Tess brings to the world is that every single person who steps foot into this platform is met with a real and honest vulnerability and real human beings figuring out what it means to live a life that's marked by faith 
and peace and courage and joy on the planet amidst some really crazy times. And so thank you for bringing yourself to the table because I think you've just, I think you've just set us on a trajectory that's going to be crucial for these next few months, especially for women. So um, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thanks, and I dude. really do hope girls that you have, you've been met with today that you felt seen and that you felt heard because I feel like some of the exact things that I've cried out for and prayed in this last season you um Caitlin spoke to this morning it's like God was just whispering into the depths of my soul I hear you I hear you mm. Alrighty, it's going to be a good good Thursday Friday I want to encourage you to take some time to meet with your maker and to surrender some of the things that are perhaps um, calling more from you than you're willing to give and to ask him what it looks like for you to move forward. And so I want you to keep your eyes peeled for what's to come in the next few weeks and why don't you take a moment right now to just honor and thank Kit. We've sent you a little something Kit so I hope that gets to you today. Oh, thank you too. And, um, Yes, cans, you will get your prize. So looking forward to that. And then you're going to see, girls, um, Caitlin has an incredible website that I was actually taking notes on today because it's so user-friendly and amazing. And on her website, you have the ability and option and opportunity to purchase her devotional. It's an amazing, amazing resource. Um, and as you can hear from the way that she's spoken today, um, it, it's full of, of God's heart. Um, and I really do encourage you to go and grab one. Go and get one for this next season ahead. Something that can be like a metronome in your life that you can use to, to early in the morning or late at night in the bath or perhaps when you're waiting to pick up kids. And it can just speak to your heart and perhaps open you up to more of God, what God wants to say in your life. And so go have a look at that. She's also got a beautiful devotional that she's just released for kids, which I'm excited to get my hands on. And I hope that... Um, yeah, Kate, okay. uh, we really do just bless the work that you do. I'm always in awe and um, inspired by women who say yes to do hard things when it's inconvenient, when it's costly, when it doesn't make sense. And this work that you've done, this book that you've released to the world didn't come out of um, nothing. It came out of a place of, of real, holy hard work. And so I know that it's gold and we receive it as a gift. And we just want to bless you and all of the work that you continue to do. I really believe uh, the finest days are ahead of you. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. Appreciate it. Awesome. Okay, girls, have a wonderful week. And I will see you next week. To your Tess, same time, same place. We're going to continue with Ordering Your Private World by Gordon MacDonald. If you haven't yet got the book, go get it. It's going to help you. And I look forward to chatting soon. Okay, bye.